Welcome to another episode of The Roundtable. Today we've got Leanne, Sam, Dave and I and today we're going to be talking about the journey that happens when we go through injury. So just a disclaimer, um, we are talking about pain and injury today. So all these experiences shouldn't be used as suggestions, but merely a um, bit of a sample size as to what goes on when we are going through injuries. So whether you relate to it, um, whether it provides a bit of comfort, but otherwise, if you are experiencing pain, do seek out an allied health professional or a pain specialist. Um, so to kick things off, we're going to start off with Sam. Do you want to take us back and describe a period of time when you did go through pain and everything that went into that? Yeah, man. Um, so I guess probably for the most part, I mean, I was talking to Kelly about this the other day. I've been pretty good really in terms of injuries for the last two to three years um, of my training, but probably the most notable one most recently that most people know about was uh, heading into open nationals. I uh, had a, my last heavy squat, which was dur- exactly a week out from competition. Um, I had 315 on the bar, which would have been, I think, a seven and a half kilo PR. Um, at that time, probably wasn't the right call, but I wanted to go for it anyway. And then, yeah, just big grind. Um, felt like a tweak popping my back out of the hole. And then for a good like three to four days was was pretty limited movement, pretty sore. Um, and then obviously being a week out from competition, not the most ideal scenario to have something significant in terms of causing acute pain and, and limited range um, that close to comp. Um, so the process was basically, I got straight in to see Tom, I think the next day or the Monday. So two days after, um, started to work through some kind of exercise to give me a bit more range of motion. Um, and then basically, yeah, worked through the tape week from there. Um, long story short, ended up getting back on a barbell, I think by the Wednesday. Um, obviously, it was a completely adjusted taper in terms of what Kelly and I originally had planned. You know, obviously, ideally, would like to be doing a bit more barbell work, you know, in that competition week. Um, and then I head into the competition, was pretty much pain free by the Saturday. And then I hit an 830.5 kilo PR total um, and in the first place. Yeah, nice. So, I mean, obviously, in the moment when you did get injured, how did that kind of affect you mentally? Because you're a week out from competition, that should be like a heavy session. And then obviously you got injured. So how would that, how yeah, that affect you? It was crazy. It was, I'm lucky to have the people around me that I did, especially like probably Steve was the first one that said to me, all right, well, you know, now it's character building week. Like it's not about getting your body ready for the competition. It's now getting your mind ready for the competition. So obviously in those first three days when I was, you know, in a bit of pain, pretty sore, pretty miserable. I had like a heap of doubts in terms of what I was going to be able to do, you know, as steep as not being able to even get on the platform, um, which was obviously pretty crushing. And that was probably the first initial thoughts in terms of like, I don't even know if I can get up there in seven days time. Um, And then even through the week, as I started getting more range of motion back, then it was of of, of course a battle of, trying to get that confidence back in my ability to still, you know, put 300 kilos on my back, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for sure, it was this week of like a roller coaster, ups and downs, you know, fighting these demons of these negative kind of voices in my head that were telling me that I was still sore, can't do it. Um, and I wouldn't be able to get up there. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a bit of a wild ride. That's for sure. I think the biggest thing that helped me, um, is having like a team around me, like I said before with Steve, but even just with like exercise professionals like Tom, one of the first things he said to me in our first appointment on the Monday was like, he said, you're going to be fine by Wednesday. Wednesday, you're going to have a bar on on your back. And then it was about, okay, two days time, do what I can do, do these exercises, do everything that I can to get physically ready and then also mentally ready. And then Wednesday, I'll be back on a bar. And then sure, Wednesday morning came around, I woke up and I felt pretty good. So that was all right one box ticked um and then from there it was about just taking confidence in what i could do in those next three days with the barbell get moving again um and go from there 
Yeah. Sounds like having that support network around you was probably like a cornerstone, especially within yeah. that week, right? Because once you get injured, there's that whole up and down journey of like, am I going to make it? Um, And I, I'm just curious as well, like, was there a contingency plan for you? Like, was there ever an option for you to not do nationals? Nah, so I was pretty much getting up there regardless. And I was going to get up there and do exactly what I needed to, to still qualify and get to Worlds, which is obviously the ultimate goal. So in terms of numbers wise, like we were basically just taking it day by day. And then it ended up being, you know, by that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I started to feel good. And then Kelly and I started putting the loose kind of numbers together. But it honestly wasn't until I started warming up that we solidified the attempts um, based off how she saw me moving on that day. But yeah, like I knew I would be able to do close to what I had planned in terms of, you know, opening at 280 on squat, at least getting 300 on the bar. Um, but I was also prepared for the worst in terms of doing the minimum that I needed. And also I was prepared to have a bit of a dogfight as well if the pain did come back. Yeah. Um, and then up, it ended up did coming back. I tweaked my back on my second deadlift. But at that point, you know, I've got one more lift left and it was like, it's going to be sore. I knew it was going to be sore after, but I just bit down the mouth guard and, and had a pull. Also because I knew that I would be better. Like I'd just been gone, I'd just gone through this week where I was pretty sore for three, four days and I got better. And I knew that if I just kind of stick it out for this one deadlift to reach this goal, I'll be sore, but then I'll be better again. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like in um, your situation, you kind of got to pay the price, right? Because the the goal for you is Worlds and that's been a long-term goal that you've wanted ticked off for like a really long time, right? So you kind of yeah. have to to weigh your options and kind of go, okay, if you do want to go and compete at nationals while you're hurt um you're gonna have to drop expectations but you're also gonna have to accept a little bit of a little bit of pain during that process right yeah exactly right i think like one big thing that helped me in that week too was like taking confidence in the preparation in terms of like a long-term scale like you know obviously as powerlifters we like the perfect prep you know week in week out like having that solid progression but at the end of the day like we're strong. We train to be strong just because like I had this taper week where it was limited movement. I've been training for six, seven, eight years. My body knows how to squat. It knows how to bench. It knows how to deadlift. So although that last week was not ideal at all, I think what helped me in that competition week was taking confidence of the years and years that I've been powerlifting and that was going to be able to show on the platform regardless. So that was what kind of one thing that I really made sure to focus on in terms of from a mental standpoint that week was that I knew what to do. I just had to be about getting as pain-free as possible and then gluing onto that mentally. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for sharing that story, Sam. It was probably very insightful, especially for people that are going through like a important prep where they don't want to um, pull out of. It's a, yeah. you, you definitely have to utilize a lot of strategies. Yeah, um, so I think, yeah, the main thing would just be, yeah, like I said, get people around you, get that support crew, and then do what you can to kind of get yourself mentally ready to get on the platform. Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll, we'll move it on to Leanne. Um, do you want to start from the beginning of a story where you experienced some sort of injury or pain that kind of set you back? Yeah, I guess for me, um, growing up playing a lot of different sports, there's a big difference between like, a, you know, you're going and breaking your arm versus like, you know, an, a niggle or an injury that you get in powerlifting. Of course, you know, bigger injuries happen in powerlifting, but I think the prevalence of um, injuries is much lower in powerlifting versus other sports, which is interesting. Um, but for me, the biggest injury that I've had is I broke my arm uh, when I was like a teenager playing gymnastics. Um, which was a very pivotal moment for me because I ended up getting surgery and I was in a cast for a very long time. It was a very long uh, recovery process. And at that time I was, um, I guess, at sort of my peak in that uh, period with gymnastics. So I was like very competitive with it and it kind of threw like a spanner in the works. And I remember like my surgeon saying 
you'll never be able to play sport again, which is something that stuck with me. And it was like, oh, like being, being an athlete, it's like, you don't want to hear that. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> That's pretty much what came into my head. Um, obviously, you know, you want to be like listening to what your health professionals are saying, but like that was my initial thought. And I'm like, nah, like I'm going to get back here. And then I ended up, um, I ended up getting, going back, but it was more so uh, the mental aspect of like, uh, you kind of get in like this rut where, certain skills so the skill that I actually broke my arm on I was having like a mental battle with it like I couldn't actually physically do it because that memory just kept popping up in my head which is something that I had to work through um which is yeah interesting but I think comparing that to like for me I haven't had any major injuries in powerlifting itself more so just like niggles and things along the way but I think that having such a significant injury growing up has kind of helped helped me adapt when you know little niggles and things pop up it's like oh it's okay it'll be okay I think that's the biggest thing is like you're going to be all right and it does get better um yeah and like reaching out to the to the right people and health professionals is really important as well yeah it sounds like from you breaking your arm, it's put a lot of perspective into the niggles that you currently face in powerlifting, right? Like you might go through something that happens quite frequently, but you're like, in terms of scale and how severe it is, it's nothing compared to what you've been through before. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how I view it. It's like, well, I broke my arm, so I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. like, of course, you know, it's still significant. Like the little things are still significant, but it's like, yeah, you, you will be okay and you will get better. Um, it's just like stick it out. And I think as well being in a comp prep, like it's common for these things to pop up. And it's like you're not alone in it. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think just to offer a bit more perspective, right, um, let's, let's double back on when you went through the surgery and then you returned back to sport and you were like repeating the same type of skills that kind of initially – broke it what was that process like when you started practicing again was it starting like very low scale or did you just go straight back into it um I think it was a while ago but I'm pretty sure I, I pretty much just got straight back into it and I was doing pretty good but then it it actually ended up like being a bit of a decline slope so it's like I was like yes I'm I'm motivated I'm ready to get back into this and then it's like my mind kind of went back into this place where it's like this is actually what happened when you did this skill so it wasn't like initially initially going back in I was fine but it was like as I kind of went through the weeks it was like got worse and worse it was really interesting to kind of go through as well because it felt like I guess injuries like you you feel like you're alone as well because no one kind of knows like what you're going through you feel like um, especially that mental aspect, like feeling like I couldn't do this skill that I've done, you know, since I was like four years old. So it was like, and people were kind of like, oh, you know, why can't you do this? But it, it's like, it's really tricky to kind of explain. Yeah. So it's more like that mental aspect that was the hardest part um, yeah. rather than the physical. Yeah, like comparing to your mm -hmm. peers, right? Everyone else looks like they're doing fine and here you are, like you're in pain, you're not able to do the skill that, you've, that you're have that you expecting yourself to be able to do and you've been doing for so long. And if we're related exactly. to that, to like powerlifting now, it's like if you're in pain and you see everyone else around you still progressing, but you're not progressing, that's probably one of the most frustrating things about being in pain, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think again, like Sam said, it's like having support around you is really important because otherwise you can kind of just dig yourself into a hole and it can be hard to get out of. Yeah, for sure. I think I'll jump in real quick. I think that's like one thing that I'm personally struggling with um, since Worlds as well as like I could tweak my back at World and you know since returning to training, since coming back home, you know I'm still dealing with a little bit of pain in my low back and especially in like now with the world of social media, everyone's posting their training, everyone's posting their progress. And like, I'm seeing other people 
post worlds or people in our little community, like clients of ours and stuff, like getting really, really strong. And then I'm obviously post worlds detrained and also dealing with a little bit of a injury and niggle. It's that's probably one of the hardest things I think us as like powerlifting athletes deal with is trying to separate yourself from comparing yourself to others who are progressing really well yeah because like everyone everyone's in a different phase as well like eventually you're going to face some sort of injury it just so happens that it's you right now right yeah and to touch on what leanne said like you do go through that period of feeling alone so that's where it's really important to have a support network around you like not not that you should have someone around you who's also injured and you can bond bond through trauma <laughs> but i mean like you know some someone who can help or even just offer a listening ear like that is very helpful when you're going through an injury yeah I think that note on like everyone's going through stages is really important like it's you can't really compare yourself to others because everyone's at a different stage in their macro scale of training but also like short term too you know everyone's going through different peaks and troughs of their overall program um so yeah I think it's that's really important in terms of again simply just focusing on yourself yeah um we'll we'll move on to dave now dave do you want to share a uh, touch on where you started when you initially got injured and your progress through that sure um so back in december i was competing and i was about two weeks out and i got like a tiny little twinge in my adductor um i felt it on like one of my deadlift back offs and it was fine i went through the next sort of week and a half with no issues i like went RP 10 on my deadlift the next week, RP nine on my squat the following week, et cetera. And I was fine. And then my last squash in, yeah, squat session before comp, um, I think I had like a three by three and it was like super, super light, but I could feel this really weird stretching sensation through my adductor. And I didn't really think anything of it until um, I made the trip to New South Wales or interstate. And I tried to do a bodyweight squat and I couldn't squat more than like, I don't even know, like probably like this far, maybe like 10, 20 centimeters uh, without being in like excruciating pain. So similar to Sam, I reached out to Tom and it was the day, no, two days before. So I reached out to Tom on the Friday and I was competing on Sunday and Tom took me through a session on Zoom and got me to the point where I could bodyweight squat again. Uh, I did all the exercises again one day out. Um, squatted on the platform fine, matched my training PR, which was sick. Um, and then in that competition, by the time I got to deadlift, um, it had kind of flared up a little bit and was really sore. So almost bombed on deadlift. I missed my opener um, at 240, pulled it on my second, and then went up 10 kilos and missed my third. Um, so that wasn't the most ideal um like comp day, even though training was like really, really good. Like that was probably the best block of training I'd had in years. Um, Came back, got into training again and it seemed kind of okay. Like I was still squatting like close to what I would on like a normal week one. And then after like a week, it suddenly just hit where it was like, oh, your adductor is actually not fine. And then it, it was the process of stripping right back to, you know, 100 kilos on squat. Um, Or some days it was so bad, I couldn't load more than like 60 uh, so from there, it was kind of just like this process of one, like working with Tom to find exercises that would help and then working with my coach to find variations that I could still do to get some sort of work in. So for me, um, SSB felt horrible, high, high bar felt the best. And then the hack squat for some reason was just like virtually pain-free. So most of my sessions would start with me going balls to the walls on hack squat destroying my legs and then hopping onto like a high bar squat and just loading what was there sort of using like a bit of a pain scale of okay I'm going to work up to whatever a set of six is at a pain of you know less than four or whatever and that was sort of the process we took while Tom and I worked in the background of finding exercises to help make it feel better and then slowly up the um the specificity so started high barring first doing the hacks after and then slowly where I am now a couple of months later is, okay, cool. I don't, uh, I don't use the hack anymore. And I'm back to low barring twice a week. Um, and I'm pretty, pretty good now. Um, I still have the occasional day, maybe like one session a month where it's a bit, eh, but for the most part, it's uh it's pretty good. So using combination of yeah variations, sort of rehab stuff, 
and then pain scale was sort of the, the approach that we took for mine. Yeah. Sounds like, um, like, like Sam mentioned before, like you had Tom, someone who's able to guide you through that process, um, especially like two days out from comp, right? Um, what, what kind of assurance did he provide you it within that session that kind of helped you gain confidence going onto the platform? Cause I think that's where I, I imagine where the most amount of doubt would be, right? Like two days out adductors in extreme pain. What went there? What happened there? So I wouldn't say it was much as like a, a verbal assurance of like, Oh, you're going to be okay, man. It was more like didn't exercise still hurt really bad to squat until we found the right thing. And then it was like, Oh, there you go. Like that feels way better. I can actually squat now. And that kind of experience of me squatting without feeling like my adductor is going to tear was like the, this is the confidence sort of thing that I needed to, to feel like I will be able to squat on Sunday. So it was more so the the physical action of doing the, the movement and feeling fine rather than a verbal assurance. Yeah. Like if we, if we touch on like the bio psychosocial model, right, there's all these different components that make up the experience of pain. Um, and if you can adjust accordingly, like whether, whether adjusting each factor predominantly should help fix it. Right. And for you, it was like biomechanics wise, once Tom addressed something that helps you with the adductor, like you're sweet, pain just goes down. Yep. Sam, yeah, hundred um, percent, and then it's like double combination of both, and then Leanne mm -hmm. as well, like just constantly facing it in training, um, having that surgeon who didn't provide that kind of social support, and then having to address it elsewhere, right? So yeah, hundred percent so factors that make up for it, and then how were you mentally afterwards? Because like it didn't, well, it affected competition a little bit, but then it finished, and then that's when the pain started to scale up quite bad. Um, how yeah. did you kind of manage it mentally once you realize it was like oh shit this is something i actually have to address well so the interesting thing is i've I've always had like a ton of niggles while i've been powerlifting um even when i was like playing rugby when i was younger I always had heaps of niggles so niggles have never really been an issue for me so whenever i've had a niggle it's hung around for maybe like a couple of weeks at most so when this started hanging around for like months at a time that was actually pretty difficult because I'd never been through that kind of long term thing before. Um, and it was times where it was like really demotivating where I'm going into the gym and I don't want to train at all. Like I just want to like put my headphones in, do the, my three sets of hack squats and then go home. Like it was not enjoyable. I didn't really find it too fun, even though it was more like classic bodybuilding. Um, not being able to do what you want to do training wise, it's just, it's a shit time, <laughs> no, no matter how you phrase it. But I think one of the biggest things that helped mentally um, to keep sort of going was, I guess, telling myself that I'm, I have an injury, not that I am injured. Um, Cause I hear it all the time as people tell themselves they're broken or they'll tell you they're broken and that they're injured. And they kind of have this mindset permanently of, I'm always going to be in pain or I'm always going to be injured. And I think that's just not helpful at all. If you go back to the um, biopsychosocial model that you mentioned before, it's a mindset's a huge thing. So trying to tell yourself that, you know, you're able-bodied and you're, you know, the body's resilient and adaptable and all the rest of it. And that you just have this little injury. It's going to go away eventually. It's not going to hang around forever is super helpful. Yeah. Like you don't want to get in that stage where you fixate your identity on being an injured person. Because yeah, then that's 100%. where you get in trouble because it's like, um, what's the word? Like muscle muscle damage wise, it could be completely addressed and everything's fine. But now it's just, you don't want to let go of being known as the injured person. Because then <laughs> who, who, who am I if I'm, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Which, which is a tricky situation. Like we all want to identify with something. And if you happen to identify as being the injured person all the time, like that's a very tricky situation because you're always expecting yeah. an, an injury to come on again. Yeah, and like I feel like it can also be used as an, as an excuse to be like, oh, I'm not as strong as I was because I got injured or I am injured now or whatever it may be. Because like that's where I'm at right now. Like all my numbers are super low on squat and deadlift and it's hard not to try and cop out and be like, oh, it's because I'm injured. And it's like, well, you're not, but I'm just not as strong as I was kind of thing. So it's trying to separate those two things um, in a way. Yeah, for sure. Um.
I, th- I, I think I guess, um oh. just real quick i think like the focus on being able-bodied like what dave says really important um and switching your mindset around that again obviously you've got to have that clearance and be working with someone um to know that you know everything's structurally okay and, and you're cleared to exercise but just this week like i saw a physio on monday um for my back and she kind of said that you know structurally everything's looking pretty good and you know we had a bit of a release work and et cetera et cetera um and basically yeah it gave me the clearance to to start training and then even just yesterday i was like got back under a bar again to squat and i did a set a tempo at like 150 felt hard as fuck um and back back felt like okay it was it was good i was like all right i'm sweet and then I was just resting in between sets and then all of a sudden I got this like lightning shot in my back and it started spasming me again. And then I was like, Oh, here we go again. And then I just went for a walk and I just kind of reminded myself like, no, nah, like structurally I'm okay. I'm good. I got back under the bar again for a second set and I actually felt better. You know, the, the second set felt stronger. It felt better on my back. So I was like, okay, sweet. I'm good. And then I was resting between my second and third set. And then the same thing I got like this, spasm in my back and I was like oh shit and just like froze up and then um yeah I just again same thing just walked it off flipped my mind back put like a song to pump me up and then got back under the bar again and then the third set felt even better so uh, I think yeah focusing on like reminding yourself that you are able-bodied you know you are strong yes you have this injury but you know if you have the clearance you are able to do these movements um, and not getting too caught up in the fact that you're injured and you can't. Yeah. And and to relate that to Leanne's point as well, it's like you're going to have those those doubts, especially in the moment when you're doing the movement that got you injured in the first place, right? So you kind of, like eventually you still have the goal of wanting to get stronger. So you need to go through it at a tolerable manner. If it's 150 kilos when your body's used to squatting 300, um, that's relatively safe. Right. Yeah yeah all right um i guess we'll finish it off with with my own story um so i think back in the prep for 2022 nationals um we i i was training with sam during this period like we had junior nationals that happened in september and october was when open nationals was so we had junior nationals a day of handling and then we all go to train at night time after after a lot of work and um I go for a PR attempt on a squat and then my, my hip just goes at the bottom of a squat. So we're like four weeks out now, my hips in pain. And I, I think that day was a full SPD session. So I couldn't extend in my bench deadlifts on that day. I literally couldn't pull from the floor. So I like put it up to a really high double, double bumper plate deadlift. And even that didn't help. So I just belt squatted on that day. Um, so during that period, I I thought or I perceived that I was in like a very competitive spot against the other boys in the 66 class. So mentally going into it, I was like, okay, it was it was a similar position as Sam where I was like, no matter what happens, I'm still planning to compete. So I need to utilize like load management. Um, and at the time I was also like really dosing high on like ibuprofen, Voltaire and things like that. Um, just to try get through the initial sessions. So we had about four weeks left. Um, usually we would have just tried to continue on the four weeks, but at that point, Steve agreed with myself that it was like best that we pull back and try and um, get ourselves as manageable as possible and then try ramp into competition. Um, initially when it happened, I was, I was pretty pissed off because in my head, I was already projecting ahead like, these boys are going to hit this number. So therefore I need to hit this number and me getting hurt now kind of sets me back, um, which is really demotivating for me to push the next four weeks. Cause I kind of thought like, Oh man, I'm already out of it. I needed to be perfect in order for me to win. Um, and so it was just taking each session day by day again. And um, if I remember correctly, like as the weeks went on, pain was actually starting to settle quite quickly. Um, I was doing a lot of rehab stuff. I was doing a lot of unilateral single leg work just to try and keep that hip moving because obviously I wasn't getting the same stimulus as I was in my regular squat and deadlift. Um, So I had to supplement 
with a lot of um, unilateral work that I could do. Belt squat was a really helpful one as well, as well as um, like single leg leg press. Those were helpful. Um, but ultimately, when it came to competition day, I like still I felt it go again on my opening squat. So that wasn't great. Like on the day as well, um, a lot of ibuprofen, a lot of Voltaren. So I think reflecting on it now, like I, aside from Steve, I was in a headspace where like in terms of support network, it probably wasn't as reassuring as like, you're going to be okay. It was more like, you need to do whatever you need to do to get to this platform and win. And it was very single-minded. Um, but then after, after the competition was when we kind of had to take a step back and that's when we really saw... I guess the damage or not being able to progress. Right. So after the nationals, we tried to run it back, give ourselves some time to rehab, but every two or three weeks, it would just keep re-aggravating like, and then Steve would have to drop volume, try run it back again, get hurt again. And so by like three blocks in, I'm doing barely any squat and deadlift volume. The numbers are like, for example, I'm doing, I used to be able to squat like, 170 or 180 for reps and then I was stuck on like 140 150 for three blocks straight right so it was really frustrating um that's when we had the session with Tom and um we all had that mentorship session where he was looking at like extension of the back um and trying to even it out on on the left side and so running through that um I would say it still helped a little bit but then honestly towards the end like it was still re-aggravating re Right. So that's where we had the conversation where Steve was like, okay, you are quite lean, just sitting above the weight class and you're still getting injured. Perhaps it's time to move up a weight class. Right. So that's where the decision to go up came from because it was the fact that I wasn't training post nationals properly for like three months. Um, I wasn't getting any stronger. And so if we provide the body with a bit more food and calories, like those niggles can start to go away. Right. So once we decided to do that, that's when training really started to kick off again. I think these past three blocks have been the healthiest I've been in like a very long time over, over like 10 months of like very minimal niggles. Right. So from just physiological perspective, it was like the fact that I now have more food and I'm sitting at a healthier body weight for myself. That's where I think um, it really helped um, on top of doing the rehab stuff making sure that, you know, I'm keeping my body quite even because like I do have quite a bit of a hip shift both in my squat and deadlift. So that's something I need to be wary of. Um, but overall, essentially like detaching myself from my identity of being a 66 and then taking on new goals as a 74 was what got me through that period of like, okay, you're in pain, but now you're um, getting out of it and you're getting healthy. Now what? Right. So touching on what Dave said, having that sense of identity being lost was um, a very big factor around that time. I was very sensitive um, because I wasn't, I wasn't this person that was in pain anymore um, going into a new weight class. So having to latch myself onto something else was very crucial to moving out of that period. Um, but yeah, I think, kind of covers everything we had for today um everyone's everyone's got their own experience and journey that goes through pain um but ultimately if we wrap everything up having a support network around you is extremely beneficial um tom who's our exercise physiologist for perf very helpful for finding out the reasons biomechanically why we might be going through um recurring issues so that's a very, he's, he's a cornerstone to, to a lot of athletes here at Perth. Um, we've got that as well as just understanding that everyone's going to go through pain eventually, right? Mm. When we go through it, it sucks, but there's still the right thing that you can do in that moment. And eventually you're going to be able to get out of it. Um, it's just being able to listen to what the right thing to do is because during that time, we're going to be very emotional and that's quite normal. But like I said, there's a lot of experiences that you can get around from from other people that might be going through it. So that's what this episode was essentially trying to help people with.
But yeah, thanks guys yeah, for sharing for sure. your experiences and um we'll see you in the next episode of a roundtable. Thanks, Daddy. Thanks. Thank you.